Hello everyone and welcome back to my series of videos where I am turning a alternator into a electric brushless motor. So this video I'm going to be covering the things you need. So first and foremost you're going to need an alternator. Now my earlier video a lot of questions I had is what kind of alternator is that? What's it off of? Well it doesn't matter any alternator off of pretty much any car truck whatever will work it doesn't matter they're all made basically the same so any alternator will work you're going to need a brushless motor speed control or an ESC electronic speed control now this is an 80 amp. I personally would use nothing under this. Um, I would really like to have one over 100 amps if I was putting this motor on something such as a electric bike or something like that. Um, 100 amps or better. Plus also you will want one rated at 6S which is the number of cells in a lithium battery such as this one 6s is the number of cells in one so you want one rated at at least 6s or six cells and no less than 80 amps now these can be had at any radio control online store or shop um anywhere some of the chinese suppliers even you can get these dirt dirt cheap from there and they seem to work really well this is where this one come this is from a chinese supplier so i paid i want to say like maybe 15 dollars for this thing but just remember six cell or six s and as high as amperage as you can afford you will need a battery of some sort. This is a 6S, 6 cell battery. This is a lithium one. This is also an RC battery for like airplanes. Um, you can either use one of these or you could even use if you wanted to like two 12 volt lead acid batteries such as car batteries or whatever. You could use two of them. So as long as you're getting 24 volts that would be great. Now, probably getting more power out of it, going back to the speed controller, if you could find one rated at higher than 6 cell, I'm talking like 12 cell, they're, they're out there, they're considerably more expensive, but uh, I imagine you could get a whole lot more power out of this motor if you could put 48 volts or better into it. Um, Another speed control I am wanting to try and I will be getting in the near future and experimenting with it, but they make 48 volt speed controllers, brushless speed controllers for electric bicycles or scooters, whatever. And they're weighted, rated at really high amperage and 48 volts or higher on some of them. So I will be experimenting with one of them also in the near future. So the battery, if you go this route, um, this battery, I'm just using for test purposes. If I put this motor on something, I would want either more than one of these batteries or a really, really large battery. Now these are expensive. That's the reason I say the lead acid batteries, you could easily use two of them wired in series to get 12, to, I mean, excuse me, 24 volts. Um, the milliamps as big as you can go on them if you go the lithium route this is a 3200 milliamp that's the capacity of the battery so the larger capacity of battery you can get the better um, lead acid would honestly be excellent excellent um, another thing you will need you will need a Arduino if you do not have one of these, I'm sorry, you're missing out. <laughs> this is the Arduino Mega. You don't need one this big. Um, there's the Arduino Uno. There's the 
Arduino Nano, any of the Arduinos will work. Um, like I said, this is this one here is overkill with the Mega. It has way more inputs and outputs than you will possibly need since we're only using one input and two outputs on the thing. Uh, you will need, let me pull it off the breadboard here, some form of a 12 volt relay. This is one I pulled out of some, I have no idea, something I desoldered this off of a board, but this is a little 12 volt relay. You could use even such as an automotive relay like this one here um, would work great also. This is 12 volts. You will need a transistor. This one here happens to be a 2222A transistor. These can be had anywhere and everywhere. You will need a 10K or 10,000 ohm potentiometer. You'll need one of those. And you will need a, also, this is a, if I can see the numbers on it, this is a 1N4007 diode. You'll need one of these little guys. We had absolutely everywhere for cheap. You're going to need a couple of resistors. Now the resistors, we'll get into them more when we talk about the circuit on what they are. Two of them. You will need a LED. Now the LED and one of these resistors is really not necessary, but I like it for a visual reference of when the relay is on. Um, another thing I have on my, <laughs> tear my breadboard apart here, it's okay, we'll rebuild it. I have a couple little screw terminals also. Not necessary, but handy. I need two of them, and then your various wires and stuff, and a small breadboard. You will also need a some form of a 12 volt power supply. Now, if you're going with the two lead acid batteries, bam, you can get 12 volts off of one of them. Excellent. On the bench here, I am using a 12 volt power supply made out of an old computer power supply, and I have a video on how to build one of them, so I will link to that also. So, this is everything you'll need. Now, one other thing I have to mention. If you go the lithium route, you will also need some form of a battery charger. This is a very, very cheap charger. can be had from any and every Chinese supplier out there in the world. I mean, even if you go lead acid route, you're going to need some form of charging the batteries. So, hopefully, I didn't leave nothing out. Hopefully, that's everything that we need. And in the next video, we will get to modifying the alternator. We will talk about how to identify the different connections in it and what needs done to it modified. To, to modify it and that's a really simple process to do all right well i hope you enjoyed the video keep an eye out for the next upcoming videos and thanks for watching see ya